and we're trying to get the ball to Dalvin some uh, some more, obviously. But uh, <clears throat> you know they were <clears throat> they were loading up and and uh, you know a lot, bringing a lot of different pressures on us. We hit them early on some pressures. You know the the, the, the pass that uh, CJ Ham caught was a um, big time pressure. So you know. <clears throat> yeah, Mike Zimmer. Just trying to explain away another disappointing Vikings loss there. You know, the most passionate and I would say studious Vikings fan we know is Randy in Cottage Grove. Uh, Randy Vikes 69, if you guys want to follow him on Twitter. Uh, Randy, how you doing this morning? Uh, not not good. Um, the, the, the bottom of the barrel is where we're at. Uh, and uh, yet another... Uh, you know, frustrating, avoidable, uh, close, close loss, and uh, this team could be could be undefeated right now, in my estimation. Hmm. And, and instead, we're uh, a turd circle in the drain. Yeah. Well, listen, we kind of thought it would be. You know, I know you'll get to your uh, your stable here in a second. We kind of thought you were a little bit down a in the dumps. Stable. It'll be a dud stable. Yeah, that's that's correct. Uh, we thought that we could cheer you up here with a little something we like to call Packers Vent Line. If you're open to it, Randy, would you would you yeah, would you like I, a little Packers I, I Vent Line? It. That that might make me a little a little snug. I get a rise out of that. Okay, all right. Okay. So here, here it is, Packer Vent Line. Go Pack, go! People are on here trying to uh, say that you can't criticize Jordan Love and he doesn't deserve to be criticized or held accountable for the game today. That's bull crap. When you're taking as the first round pick as a replacement of the quarterback, where you're a Hall of Fame quarterback, you're susceptible to be for, for judgment as well as being ridiculed if you didn't play well. He didn't play well today. He looked like he didn't belong out there. He looked like he's not ready for the moment. It's a very rare thing, I think, Randy, for Packer fans to to watch poor quarterback play like that. So courtesy of our friends on the fan in Milwaukee, but well, they got a the, the whole franchise has a golden horseshoe. Yeah, they, their luck, their luck box franchise uh you go you, you you get one hall of fame quarterback for you know 25 years and then another so that's not that's not how it works in the rest of the league we got a lot of retreads we got a lot of overpriced guys who they put the leash on you know i i wake up wake up to the reality uh you know Packer fans this is the feeling you have today is the feeling that we have forever. And it sucks, and it stinks, and yag helps, but then the next day your yagerator breaks, and you got to figure oh, that no. out. Oh, no. It didn't break, uh, did it? Yeah, I, they're, they're both on the fritz. Oh, oh no. You have more than one yagerator? you got to have a backup if you're, <laughs> what happened? A, if you're having a gathering. What happened? You, you didn't break it out of frustration, Randy, did you? So, no. One of my... Pals was trying to replace one of the bottles we cashed, and he, I told him he got to lift straight up and out, and he tried to pull it to the side and broke the neck off, and there's glass. Oh my god, there. dude! No, oh, dude. this is no. tragedy. This is this is absolute... how it's been going for me. It's not oh, been no. good. The dating apps are not working oh, well, no. uh, and the season is a turd. And and I don't even feel like mocking anymore. What's the point? We're gonna. What are we gonna do? Draft a Draft another stiff. Uh, the whole the whole thing is is frustrating. Uh, you know, Kirk can't. He's chucking the fullbacks thirty yards down the field, and what what is that kind of a bozo? Call? That's an, that's that, an that amazing. Was you know, you, you you bow down to CJ yeah, Ham. That was an amazing yeah. catch by CJ Ham. CJ Ham belongs. He knows his role. Okay, he knows his role. There's a lot of lot of guys on this team who, who haven't haven't lived up to expectations and and that's because a lot of the people in charge haven't li- lived up to expectations and that starts at the top i mean it really just starts at the top and uh the, the, it's it's it, there's an end of an era it's the end of an era uh it just the writing's on the wall you know i just wish you they could fire everybody that's what i would do just clean the whole house out clean it all out I feel like that might be a preview of your your dud stable. I'm gonna. I, I don't think we should waste any more time here. I'm kind of yeah, curious to see I, who's. I, I'm gonna. Over, I'm gonna. Music. I'm gonna unload. Here we yep. go. All right, we got the music fired up. This is the week nine dud stable. 
from Randy and Cottage Grove. This is week nine. Uh, we loaded our shorts again in another close game. And it's it this time, the, the, the stable is going to be all people who are paid to get the most out of, uh, out of a very talented roster with a lot of studs on it. They're not doing it. Matter of fact, they're not. Are they're you? not living up to any of it. Uh oh, Randy, Randy, dude, it's. I'm We're sorry. I don't. Mean, I don't mean to. I don't mean to laugh, but like, it's okay, man. Take a breath. It's okay. Team should dude. be undefeated, and that, that that this team should be undefeated, or at least one loss, maybe two, and that should piss a lot of people off. If it doesn't piss you off, Ziggy Wolf, Mark Wolf, Leonard Wolf, you're all duds. Randy, if you if you need okay, a second Randy. just to collect yeah. yourself here, man, it's, right, it's, pal. it's okay. Andrew we can... Miller, a lot of people don't know your name, Andrew Miller. Baseball. You're the chief operating officer. Some people might say it's a more of a business role. Yeah. Well, business isn't very good at the team store right now. I bet. Andrew Miller, you're dud. <sighs> Rick, random random guys. He just on went Rick's online and found Vikings Spielman. names. Rick Spielman, go ahead. And Go ahead and try to draft a guy who can contribute in year one. Not this this clown show. It, this is going well. Been, take a hike. You're done. Clint Kubiak, okay. I don't know what you learned from your old man. Maybe how to crack a beer or take a pinch of school, but not, not how to call a game. That's for sure. Not that kind of school. Clint Kubiak, you're done. Andrew Janoko, quarterback's coach. A lot of people, you just get a free pass, apparently. Why don't you teach the guy we're paying a lot of scratch how to throw it 20 yards? Andrew Janoko, you're a dud. Mm. Kennedy Pulavalu. I don't know if you're related to Troy or not, but he's twice the man you are. And these running backs don't have any kind of moxie. Delvin can, you know, bulldoze a guy if he wants to. Kennedy, look, take a look in the mirror. You're a dud. Mm-hmm. Keenan McCardle, you might have been an oh. okay receiver in your day, but these th- this day, you got to tell your guys to, 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 to call for the ball. Kirk's got to force it in there, and you got to tell him to grow up here and be confident. Keenan McCardle, you're a dud. Jeez, right. Rain, I don't know if we have, I don't know if we have time Brian to go Perry, through the whole. Co- he, some of the tight ends in this team have, have underachieved. <laughs> Herb Smith is a, is a loss we, we couldn't handle. Luke Stockers. It's your job to get more out of the talent on this squad. Brian Mariani, you're a dud. Maybe we can just say that all the coaches are duds and just move on to. Do you have any players? Line yeah, coach me too. Ben Steele. I really like some of the things you were looking at in, in camp, but not anymore, Ben. Pull, pull some guys. Don't be afraid to kind of to pull a few guys. Ben Steele, you're a dud. All right, all right. I think Randy. I think I think, I think we got to be done here. With think, right. is, you might be the senior offensive advisor. All right, that's enough. All right, just, okay. all right, all right, all right. We gotta go. Oh, we gotta go. I, don't know. Okay, I feel like for for, for his for his own good, I feel like we can just, you're not concerned okay. about him at all. Like we just allowed a man to go who is crying on. No, the I'm phone. I'm very concerned. But we, very we're doing a show right here. Now. We can't just. He's picking on. I mean, he's down to, to like quality control guys. Equipment guys. Yeah, we can't. I mean, listen, like we merchandise. We, we got to get to. I think, we he, got, went on, I think got, he went online and just looked at at the whole like I, clearly uh, team really personnel is. page and just started to pick out. Keenan McCardell. What did he? Do you think uh, Keenan McCardell might not be good? We don't know. That's a good point by Randy. Actually, do you, do you think he's got all those guys' names listed like uh, Steve Buscemi on his wall or? I I think we're that well, you know what? We we won't find out now because we disconnected from a man who I'm very concerned about. I think I think it was for the best of everyone. I might everyone be concerned about involved. the public as well. I I think they need to beat the Chargers next if week. I, for if I worked at sake. TCO, let's just say I might uh, want security walking to me in my car. God. Uh, by the way, speaking of risk management, uh, Federated's here to help you, business owners you're out there. Whether you're, you're looking to protect your bottom line or protect your employees. Just making sure that you've got a great guiding hand helping to navigate your business and maximize 
its uh, potential for success. Federated's been around for over 100 years, and they've been a big partner of ours here on Mackie and Judd and at Score North for a number of years as well. You can find out more information about the industries Federated protects and the tools and resources they offer at federatedinsurance.com. Remember, at Federated, it's our business to protect yours. All right, boys, let's get to some bonus statements here. I think we should take at least one more lap of Viking stuff because I definitely have more on my plate there. Um, I'm just, I'll just give you guys one here real quick. Okay. Mason Cole might already be better than Garrett Bradbury. So the PFF grades came out where they, you know, they take a deep look into the work that everyone in the trenches does. And Dex, congratulations on you hit this and write that down. I think on purple daily. Yeah. So, uh, he had a 74.6 PFF grade out of a hundred, which is like, that's good. It's like an above average performance. So, it's been 14 games since Garrett Bradbury had a grade that high, and only three times in his 41 career games, including playoffs, has Garrett Bradbury posted a grade of 74.6 or better. So I don't know if it's sustainable. Mason Cole was, you know, he's a backup for a reason, but he's in his mid 20s. He's still pretty young, and mm-hmm. he posted a better PFF grade yesterday than Bradbury has in 14 games, which speaks to. Not the fact that Cole is this this huge find. It speaks to how bad Brad Berry is. And if he was anything but a first round pick, he would have been benched and probably cut a year ago. That's what it speaks to. Mm-hmm. Like that is pathetic. That is when when you are looking, you're literally like trying to justify it um, as as well. Cole played. You know, he I think he played okay. But the reality of the statement is this. Guy, Bradbury is such a huge bust, and like we probably don't talk about this enough. First round pick. He's one. Is is, is he one of the worst? He's a huge bust. He's not like you know they've had some really bad busts. Like Christian Ponder is like Mount Rushmore of Vikings busts. Treadwell. Uh, Treadwell. Among, among mm-hmm. Spielman busts, Ponder, Treadwell, Bradbury's probably third. I mean, Khalil had a Pro Bowl season, even though he was a bust. At least he went to a Pro Bowl. Yeah, yeah. yeah he didn't start out a bust, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, this is bad. It's really bad. It's awful. <laughs> it's awful. All right. My statement is this, and it's both going to be positive and a little bit of a, uh, I don't know so much. Yeah. Nah. Uh, Cameron, Jim, I don't know, Jim. Uh, I don't know, Jim. Here comes 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 Jim. Judd approaches the line of scrimmage, and here's a statement. Cameron Bynum now has one more interception than Harrison Smith. And Bynum started in in Smith's place because Hitman Harry was on the COVID list and is going to miss next Sunday's game. But Cam Bynum, first of all, it was a gorgeous pick. Second of all, I think he played okay. And I've been asking all season long, is it just me or does it feel like the Hitman ain't, ain't making the impact plays that the hitman ordinarily makes. Bynum made a great diving pick. That was a tough play. I think more and more we are seeing that uh, the potential was there for for the Vikings to have said to Harrison, we really like you, and you are a ring of honor guy for sure, but it might be time instead of we will re-sign you. So Cam Bynum was actually the highest graded Vikings defensive player, according to PFF. By 27 points on a 1 to 100 scale yesterday. Wow. wow. So Cam right. Bynum got a 90 grade defensively, and Cam Dantzler was the second highest graded player at 63.8. Bynum had the amazing highlight reel interception. He also had 11 tackles, which was second behind Eric Hendricks in that game. I mean, he was making plays, and, you know, there was some steam when he was drafted, too, that, like, God, this guy could do a bunch of different things for you. And, uh, you know, I feel like the Vikings historically have done a pretty good job not going overboard, paying for past performance. With Harrison Smith, they're paying for past performance. Yeah. And they brought Xavier Woods in. I think it's a, I think it's a one-year guaranteed contract, um, and he's younger than Harrison Smith. But, God, that Harrison Smith contract right now, it's, you know, it's, it's a little deceiving because he's not going to fulfill, like, all five or six years or whatever it is. But, like, he's one of your highest-paid players into his 30s and mid-30s. Right. Mm-hmm. And, you, you know, again, one game doesn't make a career, but Cam Bynum's a guy that I'd like to see more of. He was well, really good yesterday. Yes, and and Smith is a guy who at the trade deadline last year, when your team was one and five, you should have traded. And maybe this year. 
Yeah, but but you, I mean, but you he, signed under the extension, so I mean. Yeah, no, but last year was the perfect chance, right? You stink. Um, say, Harry, we're doing you a favor. We're going to send you to a team <laughs> that's actually competitive because he can help a team for mm-hmm. sure. But this whole thing about oh my God, he's been here and you know he should retire a Viking and th- this team at times drives me crazy because the loyalty in this day and age of pro sports is dumb. Like Harrison Smith, Zim, if you're such a cutthroat coach, move on. Move on. If Cam Bynum can play, he's on a rookie contract. He's dirt cheap. But he's not a cutthroat defensive coach. And I know. I know, He was with Xavier Rose. But that's that's where the the inconsistency really bothers me. Yeah. All right, Declan. Mm -hmm. Uh, My bonus Viking statement is simple. It's free Kene Nwangu. Kene Nwangu with a big kick return touchdown yesterday in the game. And I know he started the season on the injured reserve list, but we saw this in training camp. Um, he was a, a, a nice player at Iowa State. Certainly wasn't the featured back there, but was uh, returned a lot of kicks. And I think this also proves, just like Alexander Madison, why you just you, you don't pay for running backs. You can find awesome guys like this in the later rounds. Alexander Madison, Kene Nwangu, who are fun scat backs and guys that can still be productive. And for him to return a kick uh, in, in today's day and age, is, I mean, that, that just doesn't happen anymore. Kick return touchdowns are, are a rarity. And for him to give his team a jolt, and you kind of thought when that happened that, all right, the Vikings are winning a turnover battle. They just got a kick return for a touchdown. Things are going swimming and swimmingly, and you still figure out a way to lose the game, which is frustrating. But I think Kane Nuwangu stepping in and getting a big kick return touchdown, and I want him more feet. I want him featured more. If CJ Ham can get a wheel route down the field, put the ball in Kane Nuwangu's hands as well. I, Jefferson huh? on the pecking order. He's still Nuwangu is still low. I get that. He's above Luke Stocker. He shouldn't be above. He, you know, he shouldn't be above Justin Jefferson. But I thought Kane Nuwangu had a great performance yesterday. Free Kane Nuwangu. Yeah, dude, yeah, that's he's speed, explosive, dude. man. That mm-hmm. speed. How do you not have a package of plays? So it doesn't. Ha- he does not ha- have to play a ton. But how do you not with that speed, which we all saw in training camp? So like this is not a oh my god, I didn't know he could play. He is a guy that if any any coach who had an idea offensively, McVay, Reed, that list would have a package of plays for him instantly. Yep. Yeah. Okay. This guy is one of the fastest players in the NFL. Like, how can we get in the ball three times on offense a game and see if Correct. he can break a play? Right. Little. Correct. Whatever. Little screen. Little. Little. Little jet sweep or something. Yep. You know. I, th- I thought the Vikings were turning a corner. The first two plays of the game, they run. They ran a jet sweep to Justin Jefferson to start the game. Of course. And then they ran jet sweep action on the second play and handed off, I think, to Dalvin Cook and got a big gain. And it was like, okay, all right, here we go. Movement, creativity, here we go. You know, deep pass Scripted. to Justin Jefferson. Oh, the script is good. Yep, and then the script goes away, and it's like, oh, God, what do we do? This is well, confusing. Yeah, and and this idea of, of let's dump the ball off to Cook, okay? Imagine if that is Declan's guy. If that's Kane with that speed, he he literally cuts without stopping. It's the damnedest thing. I don't know how, but it's a gift. No. He makes cuts and he doesn't slow down. If if the Ravens blitzed and you dumped the ball off to him, he'll gain thirty yards. And yet yeah. you're like, well, he can't play yet. He's not prepared. No, <laughs> he not. he was hurt. He has to suffer for being hurt. More Conklin. More Conklin. What does it More say? Stalker. <laughs> what does it say when your special teams right uh, now is the most creative um, <laughs> facet that you have? Your special teams is right now. I love me a fake punt. More so than defense, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Offense is not close. But yes, fake punt uh. and Nuwungu returning. Is a game Can changer. I say too that it felt like the Ravens because it was that fake punt. The Ravens they weren't like fully fooled on it, you know. Like their defenders kind of keyed in. Okay, here this is happening right now, and Nuwangu just like he blows by the edge and winds up picking the yards anyways because he's one of the fastest players in the NFL. So um, I got I got one more here on the Vikings front. It's more of like a league wide thing, but yeah, that was a garbage horse collar call. Right off the bat, first defensive series of the game on DJ Wanham in the first quarter. Um, I am glad that it didn't come up on Ventline yesterday because even though they did lose by three, the three points that the Ravens were gifted, there were so many other things in that game that held the the Vikings back. So I'm glad that that was. I, I kind of thought, oh, man, we're, we're going to focus too much on that bad call. But it was a mind-boggling bad call. Mm-hmm. 
And I think it's it opens up just a bigger discussion again about why 15-yard penalties aren't reviewable. And that one was a def- like, like face masks are defined, right? The horse collar is defined. It's the letters of the jersey and above. You can't grab a guy from behind, letters of the jersey and above. And Wanham grabbed Lamar Jackson, I think it was Lamar Jackson, right in the middle of the number eight. And so you could easily go and, and you know, put it on the coaches. If, the, if you know, there's a 15-yard penalty called, and then the coach can decide if he wants to challenge or not. It doesn't have to just go be an automatic review. You know, I don't need, we don't need to be robbing, you know, two and three minutes of game flow here. But that should have been challengeable, and it was just a bad call. And it did affect the game. The yeah. Vikings the Vikings had so much momentum, they turned the ball over, right? So that was garbage. Yeah, they now they, they did get some calls, too, because... I thought that the uh, PI that the Vikings got that was called for Conklin in the end zone on the fourth down pass, which was broken up or incomplete, was a questionable call too. So it shifted both ways. But yeah, I mean, that's one because, to your point, Phil, it's not subjective that you, you could have just fixed. I got one, one more too. And here's my statement. Don't be stupid. All right? End of the first half. The Vikings have the ball, and they have been criticized in recent weeks, and well-deserved, right, for not trying to take a shot. Like, you you kneel constantly. Um, End of the first half, instead of being like, let's let Kirk take a shot, they act like they're going to kneel. And then then they try a little sneaky handoff to Dalvin Cook, which only, as Schler said on this, he's right, which only could have resulted in disaster. I mean, there's nothing else that could have. So your your comeback to us cranky <laughs> fans and people in the media, your comeback of we'll show you is I'm going to act like I'm going to kneel and then hand the ball to Cook. Don't be stupid. Don't don't be dumb. That's dumb. It's almost it's like childish. they it's like they went in saying, all right, we're gonna we're gonna put some wrinkles and we're gonna do a fake punt and then we're gonna do like a weird deceptive fake kneel down. And, uh, and we're going to throw one deep pass to Justin Jefferson. Like, that's how we're going to mix it up with those three things today. It's going to be great. But, no. I mean, did they really think that Cook was going to break away and score? Like, that's what they thought. I don't know. That's what they thought. They it's put so in dumb. where where every other team in this godforsaken league calls, calls, rightfully so, for a Hail Mary pass deep down the field. These guys called for a... Handoff. Well, where were okay? Remind coming. me, where were they on the field, and how they much were in time? Baltimore was left? territory, so it would have taken. The, if Kirk had passed the, were they? the ball, it wouldn't have gotten. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Hold on a second, I got the, I got no, play I by see. play right here. They were. They couldn't they have were. been in Baltimore territory for that. No, I think they There's were. No way. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Let's see here. So anyway, I'm gonna pull the, it up here too. All right. Because right. if they were in Baltimore territory, they would have either kicked a long field goal or thrown oh, no, in the no, end zone. No. I'm sorry, Vikings 25. Yeah, I was going to say. I misspoke. Okay, but so yeah, you're wrong, fake, Zolgad. Right, I'm wrong. <laughs> but fake Neil by the quarterback. That's your, <laughs> that was, oh, we'll show you. You think we don't design plays. <laughs> hey, Kurt, just hand it off and they'll never guess. I mean, just let them launch the ball down the field. Yeah, that was Mickey Mouse. All right, back to uh, Declan here. All right. I got a hockey statement from uh, last weekend's Minnesota Wild win, or yesterday's Minnesota Wild win over the New York Islanders involving my guy, Kevin Fiala, and my statement is, I wouldn't worry about it. That's my statement. I wouldn't worry about it. So Kevin Fiala has now gone 10 consecutive games, 10 consecutive games without a goal. He scored on opening night. He did have a shootout uh, goal against the Penguins on, on Saturday, but that doesn't count towards your goal statistics, but 10 consecutive games without a goal. He hasn't had a stretch like that in Minnesota since being acquired in March of 2019. So basically it's been two and a half years since the last time Kevin Fiala's went uh, 10 plus games without scoring a goal. But when you look at the depth of this team, that other players are stepping up and, and scoring big goals, Judd and I were talking yesterday on Judd's Hockey Show about how if you're opposition, if you're the opponent, can you shut down Kirill and can you beat us still? Because that was what that's what Vegas did in the playoff series. We'll shut down Kirill Kaprizov and then can Marcus Felinos and Ryan Hartmans, even Kevin Fiala, can they end up beating us? And so far, Kirill Kaprizov with just two goals, Kevin Fiala with just one goal, but yet the Wild are still winning games, and other guys are stepping up and scoring big-time goals. And on Fiala's front, just from an analytics and everything else, 
he is getting extremely unlucky. I mean, his course, he is through the roof, meaning when he's on the ice, he's creating chances. He's been noticeably uh, still setting up plays. He's shooting a ton. His shooting percentage is criminally low. There's definitely a volcano. I think that's going to be erupting here soon with him. And then the goals will start coming. But just one goal in 11 games, there could be panic there. And, th and the Wild definitely need Fiala to be a goal scorer. He's paid to be a goal scorer. They don't really pay him for moral victories, but I, I personally wouldn't worry about his goal drought reaching 10 games. Everything's going to be okay with him. Yeah, I think it's kind of amazing that like they haven't gotten the best. Like, it doesn't feel like they've reached their best offensive effort yet, and here they sit. like They're off to a really good start. So I, I think it's yeah, it's, it's a bad sign, but it's also a good sign, unless you think Fiala has just like devolved as a player or something, which no, I don't believe that to be well. the case. He's playing well. Oh, and wait, they are, they're a team that plays close games, and they win them. Mm -hmm. But the Vikings, I mean, the Bengals game, if there had just been something different there, and yesterday, if they're right, eventually you're just a bad team. Well, here's like the you, you either win games or you don't win games. On the close games front, too, it's you know it's it's so easy to get caught up in well so these are close games and if this one little thing would have been different if you miss right. if you make a kick right but there's there's another world out there where you're not playing in close games because you've done something to score more points or you've <laughs> like you've you've been more aggressive in certain situations like the Vikings don't have to play all close games yeah. other teams get blowout victories because they keep their foot on the gas pedal you can too what a Absolutely. novel concept. Well, and two close games might be bad luck. Might be bad luck, right? I got some bad luck going here. You get to three and four, you're just not very good. Yeah. All right, my last statement for you guys is P.J. Fleck is one of the worst in-game coaches in college football. But he makes up for it by bringing in pretty good <laughs> rosters true. and marketing. So I mean, he is one of the brilliant. Like, he's, so he's a great recruiter. They're bringing in more talent than they've had. You know, they're, you know, they're four running backs deep. Um, but he is such a bad in-game coach, and Tanner Morgan is so bad at quarterback. We're wondering, well, how was he so good in 2019? Oh, I don't know. Did you see Rashad Bateman in an NFL game yesterday? Every catch is a first down. You know, uh, what's his name? Uh, Tyler Johnson was an NFL you know, third, fourth-round draft pick, whatever he was. So you take away NFL receivers, and now you're, you're getting exposed. So that was an embarrassing loss. The Bowling Green loss was even more embarrassing. You know, just think about where you'd be at if you didn't have these embarrassing. You're double digit. You're a 14 and a half point favorite at home. You're a 30 point favorite at home. You can't win by a field goal and keep your season alive. So I don't know, man. I'm um, I'm kind of out on PJ, the in game coach. I don't know what to do about that though because he's the head coach. Yeah. So like, you can't really fix it. Uh, to piggyback off that point, I agree. I think the kids love him, and I think he can recruit really well but i would go so far as to say the entire coaching thing including who i employ to call plays is questionable like like everything that starts with okay the the raw raw personality stuff uh stops here okay and now it's coaching and you got to hire the right people and on game day um he's just questionable mike sanford jr being allowed to call plays for this team is criminal it's a criminal act. Clint Kubiak and Mike Sanford Jr. should be called into separate offices today and relieved of what they're doing. And I know, I know I'm the fire people guy, but honest to God, if you want to send them both to me, I'm done here about one or so, I'll fire them both. I mean, they are that performance. I went. That performance on Saturday was inexcusable again. Inexcusable for. That team. And by the way, I think, by the way, by the way, the way, unfortunately, I've become convinced that the Vikings are just sort of a lost cause. Go for football didn't need to be. Like, this didn't need to be. Are you telling me Zach Anikstad is so bad at quarterback now that as Tanner makes bad decisions and gets flustered and struggles? Are you telling me Zach Anikstad, who, if you go back, I think three, three years or so, Beat out Tanner Morgan for the yeah. starting job. Cannot get on the field, Phil. He can't get on the field. Yeah, no, I'm uh, I'm with you on this. So let's let's talk about Mike Sanford Jr. here for a second. Oh God. So <laughs> he was he was it, it, he was the head coach at Western Kentucky for two years in 2017 18. Western Kentucky, Conference USA. Okay, it was so bad they fired him after his second season. 
They went three and nine and two and six in Conference USA after they were they were six and seven and four and four uh, in conference in, in his first year and then lost a bowl game. It was so bad they said, "Dude, we don't even need a third year. You're just not the guy." At Western Kentucky, okay. All right, so then he dusts himself off, and he becomes the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach at Utah State in 2019. Why is that important? Jordan Love was the quarterback at Utah State, okay? So Jordan Love's first two seasons, let's go to Jordan Love's uh, sophomore season, his breakout season at Utah State, one year before in 2018, one year before Sanford Jr. arrived. Mm -hmm. 32 touchdowns, six interceptions, and one of the uh, eight and a half yards per attempt, one of the best passer ratings in college football, like that sophomore year put Jordan Love on the map as a potential first round draft pick down the road. Sure. Sanford Jr. comes in as the offensive coordinator quarterbacks coach the next year. And Jordan Love goes from six picks to 17. The touchdowns go from 32 down to 20. The yards per attempt go from 8.6 to 7.2. And then he comes to Minnesota. And Tanner Morgan, again, Morgan had NFL receivers in 2019. But Sanford Jr., I think it's been, what, this is year two of Sanford Jr. as the yes. uh, offensive coordinator quarterbacks coach. And Tanner yes. Morgan is is a lot worse now than he was two years ago. So this dude is, <laughs> I don't know, man. He's This dude ain't it, I guess is what I'm saying. Chris Ottman-Bell is on your team, and he's really damn good. And much like the Vikings, he can't get the football. Dude. Like, what What are we doing here? Ugh. Ugh. What a, Can anybody explain to me what we're doing here? I don't know, but this I'd feels really good. Like this feels know. good. I'd really like to know why I wasted my Saturday w- watching well, that's on Bielema. You. That's on you. No, I know, but I went there. Not, that's a choice. I, I, I went to Huntington Bank Stadium, <laughs> not with the intention to waste my day, but to spend it on a gorgeous fall Saturday watching college football, watching the Gophers set up a meeting um, this coming Saturday with the Hawkeyes, which I think was going to be a primetime nationally televised tilt, right? It's now a 2.30 start on Big Ten Network because the Gophers peed so thoroughly down their leg. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, this is at this point, this is a you problem, getting this yeah. worked up about the Gopher football team. I mean, I, I waited three plus hours for Top Golf on Saturday. Three plus hours, and like that—that that was painful. But nothing compared to what you we, wait. You like you were at Top Golf for three hours, yeah. before a stall opened. Yes. Why? Uh, so uh, the, the gal and I—I I was going to meet her brothers at Top Golf, and you can't like book out a bay more than like a week in advance, and. We tried to, like, get one, but it was the only opening times, like, early in the morning, and we didn't want to do it then. But on the app, it kind of gives, like, a wait time window. Like, hey, the, the opening of Bay is, like, an hour or an hour and a half. So we see it, and it says an hour and a half to wait. And we were like, oh, let's just go in there because you can't book them online. You have to go in person unless, like, you're doing, like, a corporate party, which is, again, just kind of mind-blowing to me. So we go there, and we ask to reserve a Bay, and the lady literally goes, it'll be three and a half to four hours. But the, and, okay, and you guys stayed? We did. Couldn't you have left? <laughs> we thought about doing something else, but then why would you go and to also, else? but like, but it's kind of like restaurant waiting to like they always over exaggerate, right? Like usually it's no, always over exaggerate. Three and a half hours is is going to be probably that long. And the weird thing was like in the it's not a restaurant in text. the Top Golf bar, but there was like a half dozen people there, and it was a beautiful day. In, it's a, it was the last like sixty five degree day in Minnesota for probably the next five months, but. Still, I, I I ended up waiting it out, but it was it wasn't that bad. I ended up waiting it out. That's so you guys, what did you guys do? You just sat. Did you, I mean, I suppose you could watch football and like watch get appetizers football, got, and got stuff. Got drinks, appetizers and stuff. Yeah, we, we right. waited it out, and then it was it okay. was worth it. I love me some Top Golf, so I, I was fine. Okay. And Top Golf wants to sponsor six the hours show. At Top and doesn't want to make me wait three plus hours if they want to be a sponsor of a Mackey and John. <laughs> I was Please, say, I'm not, no, no, that's exactly why out. I didn't say a thing. Help me out. No, no, no. no. I love Top Golf. Uh, uh-uh, Top Golf. You love go. Yeah. By the way, I, I am not ripping Top Golf. I'm questioning the decision to wait for three and a half hours to get a Top Golf. I probably would have left, but I guess if you could get drunk there, who cares? Yeah, I mean, th- there was a 15-year-old with us, so like we we had, we had a younger brother with us, and I, th- I think he was getting a little wary. But uh, the other three of us were 21 plus, and and we're having drinks. But yeah, it, it ended up working out okay. Ended up working out all right. Ended up working out all right. It's a long Meeting time. family, long huh? Time, yeah. Meeting family, yeah. Somebody likes to dive into the pool sometimes, huh? Head first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even when that person swears off that, they still do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Boy, it's all, all it's or never, nothing, baby. Um, all or nothing. Yep. Yep. 
I got other comments I'm not going to say. Way okay. to go, Brando. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right. That's a wrap here. I'm Mackie and Judd, man. Great. Some great therapy here. Some great therapy. We're here for you guys. All right. We're here for you. I'm and as we didn't think about this. You are. I didn't even give you a Timberwolves statement yet. That's no. how many things we had to get Ooh, well, off our chest. No, on the football I, I got front. a feeling that's coming Tuesday. tomorrow because that's <laughs> yeah. going to be. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, fire everybody. All right, um, Mackie and Judd, thanks for hanging out with us. Please check out our app, the Score North app, and the Score North Instagram account is almost to 8,500 followers. Uh, so help us get to another milestone, almost to 9,000. Be awesome. All right, see you guys tomorrow.